First up, it's breakfast. My spiced baked porridge. Absolutely love it. Why? I grew up with it. There's something very Scottish about porridge. It's that kind of sort of great start to the day. My father used to say, porridge needs salt and salt only. It separates the men from the boys. Didn't really like it. He always insisted salt puts hairs on you. <laughs> I used to sneak a couple of sugar lumps from cafes and put them in my porridge without him watching. These days, my porridge has much more flavour than just salt. It's packed with fruit, nuts and spices. Add vanilla seeds to your porridge oats or oatmeal. Really important just to rub the vanilla through the oatmeal. Makes it nice and fragrant. Now, a little teaspoon of cinnamon makes it spicier and then nutmeg. Already, that smells incredible. I quite like making this up a week at a time, and Jack absolutely loves it. Now, whole almonds. Now, if you don't like that kind of crunch running through the porridge, you can chop these up or blend them to a powder, but I quite like the sort of texture. Hazelnuts, incredibly good, and a really nice crunch. Keep your vanilla pot in there as well. That just gives it even more lift, and of course, once it's baked, just pull it out. Instead of sugar, I'm adding sweetness with fruit, fresh pears and raisins. Cranberries are great as well. Chopped apricots as well, dried apricots in there. Dried mango. I love dried fruit. Next, pour in a pint of milk and mix. This can be done the night before, left in the fridge. And then, a couple of minutes before you go to bake it, add your cream. Now, into your dish. It looks quite liquid, but by the time it bakes, has this really nice, rich crust on top. And then, just a nice little nutmeg on top. Now, bake at 180 for 30 to 35 minutes. Then take the porridge out, sprinkle on demerara sugar and grill to create a sweet golden crust. And sort of glaze on top. Beautiful. Literally for three to four minutes. Look at that. That makes me feel proud to be Scottish because it's perfect for a big comfort family breakfast. It's rich, it's sumptuous, and it's just a humble oatmeal. Phenomenal, especially in the winter. My spice baked porridge with all those nuts and fruit it's a bowl full of love to start the day. Easy homemade spicy baked beans with deliciously light potato cakes. The first big thing that I remember as a kid was bacon and beans. So this is like a little rendition, except we're using the most amazing pancetta. Ernie, come on, Psst. disappear. Go and chase some mice. Now, pan on, get nice and hot. I'm going to turn these beans into glamorous beans. Pancetta into the pan. Lightly season that. It's cured, so it doesn't need that much seasoning. Now, start frying off that pancetta. It's amazing how the individual taste of baked beans, they're somewhat bland, so I always like to make them a little bit more spicy. So, a nice, finely chopped chilli with the seeds, chilli in. Now, a bit of garlic. Crushed. Phenomenal. Get that bacon really nice and crispy. Fry off the chilli and the garlic. And then onions. My top tip for dicing, finely sliced downwards. Slice across, then cut down to simply dice. Bacon, onion, chilli, garlic, that flavour all contained in that little pan. Once you've sweated the onion off, a little bit of sugar in there. The brown sugar will start to caramelise, darken and enrich it as well at the same time. A couple of tablespoons of cider vinegar deglaze the pan. It's got that really nice, powerful kick to it now. Spice that up with one of my favourite seasonings, Worcester sauce. Bring that to the boil. 
and add your passata puree tomatoes. Simmer the sauce to reduce, then add in the classic baked bean, haricot beans. You can buy haricot beans dried or canned. They are packed with protein and have a lovely soft texture. Turn down the heat and let the beans absorb all that beautiful, spicy tomato sauce and just let that simmer now. Now for my potato cakes. They're a fantastic way to use leftover boiled potatoes and are so easy to make. I'm making a simple potato dough by adding flour and butter to the mash. That gives it that nice sort of cakey texture. Take a nice spoon of potato, lightly flour your board. We're going to fry these crisp on the outside and just nice and fluffy in the centre. Now, get your pan nice and hot. We'll start off with olive oil into the pan. Now, put the butter around the outside because it starts heating up by the time it goes into the centre. It's almost sort of nut brown, gently. Turn it over. Love that nice, light, crisp. They look beautiful. Now, take them out. Oh. Potato cake in the middle. And a nice, beautiful spoon of beans. Growing up with beans on toast as a treat, still to this day, after all those years, has not changed my love or attitude for beans. My smoky, spicy, homemade baked beans with light and creamy potato cakes, comfort and satisfaction on a plate.